How's it guys? Peter here. This is quite a special video today because it is our three month anniversary after we quit our full time jobs as veterinarians. So in today's video, we are just going to give you a quick update on how our life has been so far, as well as the projects that we have been working on. Uh, it's going to be completely unscripted. We are just going to give you an update on the numbers and then we are just going to answer a couple of questions that you guys submitted in the community tab to give you a better understanding of where we are currently at and where we are heading in the future. Okay, Laka, cheers, let's start. Okay, so you guys are probably here for the numbers, so let's start with that. All right, so this is the income for April 2022, so basically the last month. The previous three months were kind of similar, but uh, April was the best month so far. On my Dr. Pete Veterinary YouTube channel, we made $143 on YouTube ads. On my Financial Money Marks YouTube channel, we made $49. On our Pet Vet Tips Veterinary blog, we made $50. From Affiliate Income, we made $157. From Support Revenue, which is from Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee, we made $15. And with our pet setting business, we made $66. All right, so that brings us to a total of $482. I know, that's probably not the numbers that you guys were expecting. It's nothing special. We didn't go viral and boom out. But you guys know that this channel is all about transparency and we just want to give you a realistic idea of what exactly to expect in these circumstances. But yeah, we will talk a bit more about the numbers in the questions that we will answer. Okay, so as promised, we have a very special guest today that will join me in this video, which is, you guys probably guessed it, my beautiful wife, Anne Rien de Villiers. good to be on this side of the camera for once <laughs> yeah welcome uh, anarin has been featuring in my videos a couple of times uh, in the b-roll background but yeah today she's making an appearance and she's just going to join me in the kind of update that we're going to give you guys and just help me to answer a couple of the questions all right cool welcome okay so i'm just going to give you a quick update on the projects we are currently working on so obviously for me it's this youtube channel i kind of experimented with posting twice a week but uh, my videos takes quite a long time to research and to edit and each one probably takes about 20 hours it becomes a bit tedious so i just scaled back to one video once a week because i want to give you guys the best possible video that i can and i don't want to just rush something off just to produce another video so i'm going to stick with one video a week so far and then focus the rest of my attention on my other projects so i also have my other veterinary youtube channel dr pete which I'm not really posting on at the moment. Um, I'm going to push that to the side for now as I want to focus for now on my South African personal finance audience, but I will probably use that in the future again. At least as you guys have seen, I'm not posting to it, but I'm still making money, so that's good. And then I also have my Rants to Riches financial blog where I post reviews of various credit cards and bank accounts uh, that I'm currently working on. It's still fairly new, but I'm posting articles to that on a frequent basis. So hopefully that will also grow bigger in the future. And then I also started an Instagram, TikTok and Facebook page under the Money Marks or Mr. Money Marks name that you guys can go check out. I kind of want to widen my net of capturing more audiences on different platforms. And I kind of want to use different kind of social media platforms for the initial intended use. So for example, on Facebook, I want to post daily or maybe three times a week tips on personal finances, just in a normal text format. Then on Instagram, I want to convert that in a nice little infographic. Or when I say I, I mean my wife, because <laughs> I don't like doing that. And then on TikTok, I will just convert it to very small videos. Um, TikTok is a bit strange for me. At, at initially, I thought it was just for young girls dancing and i'm not doing that sorry but i will still be able to hopefully produce fairly entertaining educational content so yeah um we i'm going to work a, a lot harder on that moving forward and then i'm also on twitter but guys i'm not that active on twitter i know you guys the ones that are on twitter want to you know you guys post five to seven times a day I'm, I don't do that, sorry, but I am there. If you guys want to message me, then that is another platform to use and maybe in the future I'll become more active. And then, yeah, Anarin, what projects are you working on? Okay, 
can have the fork. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so for me currently, um, basically working on two things. Uh, so the first one would be the blog, uh, which is petvettips.com. So there um, I'm writing articles. We've got three species there at the moment. So it's silky chickens, um, pet rats and sugar gliders. Um, so the aim of the blog is to uh, see where there's a need for information on the internet and where there's mis misinformation and then just to provide um, accurate and, and free information uh, to help uh, people take care of their pets. And then the other one is um, relatively new still. I'm working on uh, a few NFTs. Um, so I've got two collections currently. Um, and it's hosted on the ravenness.com, so on the on the Ravencoin network. And the plan with the NFTs is to uh, use a portion of the proceeds to eventually help pets in need afford veterinary care. Um, so yeah, you know, just kind of doing, wanting to do my part for the veterinary community um, wherever I can, um, and just to make a difference where we can. Um, yeah, so we're just dipping our toes in there and uh, learning as we go. Yeah, and that's kind of the main theme about this whole in endeavor, in endeavor <laughs> thing that we are approaching at the moment. We saw that there's a lot of need on the internet and just in the world of proper, um, accurate information, both in the veterinary field, where we are both qualified as veterinarians, as well as on the financial field. So we want to produce this educational content for free, of course, as much as we can, uh, because what we've learned is as veterinarians, we struggled to really perform the best that we could because a large proportion of the population cannot afford proper veterinary care, either because they really don't have the money or because they're not that great at managing money. So what I'm trying to do is to educate people on personal finances and then Anarin is educating them on veterinary content. So we kind of want to go full circle and that is the main theme of all of these projects that we are approaching. That is kind of the bigger picture, but it's we're working little bit by little bit to try and make that possible. Okay, cool. So now we are just going to answer a couple of questions that you guys submitted and yeah, we'll take it from there. The first one is, where are you currently living? So we used to stay in Van der Bell Park in Gauteng, but after we quit our jobs, we packed up everything in our apartment, threw out a lot of stuff, sold a couple of items and donated the rest. And then we put everything in a small storage unit in Bloemfontein. And then we basically are just traveling around with whatever we can fit into our car. So that includes all our clothes, the, the gear that we use to make the YouTube videos. So my studio lights, my camera, everything, um, my monitors, laptops, all of that. Uh, and for the first part, we stayed with Anarin's parents in Bloemfontein. And we are currently residing in the Eastern Cape. They have a little beach house here, which is very nice. And we are very fortunate to be here. And yeah, we're just going to stay here for a while. And then I also have family in Cape Town that I want to visit in probably in July, August around that time. So yeah, we are basically homeless now. So we are just blocking with all the family members that we have. And that really helps out. And we are very fortunate that we have that opportunity. Do you carry on living life as before after quitting or were you forced to make major adjustments? So yeah, we had to make a couple of adjustments. Obviously, we were earning a full-time income as well as side hustle income. Now we're not earning full-time income anymore. So we had to cut down our expenses a lot. So one of the biggest expenses was rent. So we moved out, we put our stuff in storage and now we're living with our parents. So that kind of to care of rent utilities we don't have to pay utilities anymore because we don't have a house or apartment uh, stuff like fuel actually sold my pjo end of february so we don't have to pay any insurance or fuel cost on that anymore so we are basically just tra traveling around with one car which helps to bring down the cost for insurance and then another big expense for us as most of you probably know is food i think i can put out very close <laughs> Okay, yeah. and then um, more on, on my side, one of the biggest expenses were probably um, food uh, that we cut down a lot. Basically cutting down on expensive treats and wine and great meat <laughs> and uh, focusing more on, on cheaper food. So chicken and 
a bit more rice and pasta. Yeah, so no more Willy's ice cream for Peter. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically we just focused on the cheaper food items and then just basically cutting out all of the luxury items, which was actually not that bad. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's it actually was, been really good. Yeah, it's quite liberating, I have to say. Yeah. For me, for example, previously if I walk in the store and I see a lacquer piece of cake and I'm like, yes, that looks nice. And then I had to reason with myself, you know, should I buy this? You know, is it healthy or not? Now it's easy. Now I just say, oh, I can't afford that, so <laughs> I'm not buying it. That That's kind of nice for me, actually, in this experience. Yeah, and, and for, for other things as, as well, like um, clothes or just nice to have that you see in the shops so you, you realize you, you don't need that. Yeah, so it's yeah, been so good. We haven't bought any new clothes or any tech or anything like that. It's just focusing on the bare basics to, to live. How has this change been on your relationship? So for me, it has been really good. Uh, obviously we are spending a lot more time together and spending more time together means you get to know each other on a much deeper level so something that i really wanted to gain from this experience is to focus on our own skills and talents and to build from that so it's really nice for me to see anarin developing her skills especially on the art side of things the digital art because that is something that she's really interested in and with our full-time job you just don't have time to develop that so that was nice for me to see her develop that and yeah we actually were able to go on a honeymoon to Zanzibar which was really cool we we're initially supposed to go in 2020 in March but then you know Mr. Corolla happened and we had to keep on postponing but luckily we were able to go now um, in March April in April <laughs> and it was a lot of fun and we will show you guys more footage on that on the Instagram page but uh, yeah and this is kind of just extended honeymoon actually because now we are spending all this time in a beautiful beach house in the Eastern Cape and we are able just to know each other on a much deeper level. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, yeah it's been it's been great and what's what's great for um, with, with Peter and I is that we we're both introverts so we we're fine with doing our own thing while being in, in each other's company. We don't feel like we need to talk to each other all the time. But then when we do spend time together, like for example, taking a walk or going on a hike, um, it's it's extra special. So it's it really, it I think it deepened our relationship and also taking such a big leap with a with a kind of uncertain future. We, we had no choice but to, to trust each other and just dive in and see what, whatever happens and take on the challenge. Yeah, doing it together. That's what mm. this is all about. So we are a team, husband and wife, veterinarians, and we are taking a risk together. That just kind of, it just deepens your relationship, taking risks like this. Um, obviously, that could put strain on a relationship, especially financially, but we knew this in advance. So we are able to work through that. And when I'm feeling like yes, this was a bad mistake that we made then Anarin will motivate me and when she feels down then I can motivate her so that's also nice to have somebody to both hold you accountable and to just tell you this is okay this is why we are doing this this is why we decided to do it and yeah just being a team is always just better than being alone yeah we really. need to get it mm -hmm. yeah all right what was the biggest surprises good or bad you found during this experience okay so good obviously being able to just tackle any project that you always wanted to just you know whatever you feel like doing the day you do you don't have anyone to report to you don't have to be somewhere at a specific time you just do what you love and that's something that i really enjoy because every single day i get new ideas of oh, i want to try this now i think this is the new thing this is it's kind of just having that shiny object syndrome it's like oh squirrel and then I will just go and and now I have the time to do that. And most of the ideas I get fail, but just to be able to to try and just like explore these ideas is really awesome for me. And I'm really glad that I have the time for that. And yeah, just as I said previously, developing our skills and our talents and just building on that together. That's probably the the highlights for me. Okay. Um. Yeah. And obviously, freedom to do what with your day whatever you want to when you want to um so basically you can decide what you want to achieve for it for for a day or what what your ideal day would look like and then just go and do it so so that's been amazing um to feel so in control of your day and be able to plan as you wish 
and then on the bad experiences part well probably ov obviously the financial part we are not earning a steady income stream anymore full-time income we are taking a massive pay cut that is something that we knew would happen but still i've been tracking our ex income and expenses for the past two years now and i have a pretty good idea of what has been coming in and what has what went out and now seeing what the little money that is coming in that still has its toll on you but still we made a commitment to do this so that's fine that it's not that bad and um i don't think the the second thing is not really bad for me but it is a kind of a challenge is both because now we have all the time in the world to decide what we want to do there's no one that is holding you accountable except for the two of us so you don't have a boss telling you you need to do this and this and this today you're your own boss so you need to decide you know you can't justify sleeping until 10 o'clock in the morning you have to get up early do your day's work we still work about eight to ten hours a day on our different projects so uh yeah you just have to hold yourself accountable that's a challenge but not necessarily bad i think actually that's a good skill to develop yeah i um, just like to reiterate that that's definitely been the biggest challenge is self-discipline because with great freedom becomes great responsibility um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so not wasting time, uh, but knowing that, that every hour is precious. To know that if you work hard during the day, w during your working hours, that you can go to bed at night feeling accomplished with what you did that day. Did your faith play a part in your decision to leave your jobs as vets? I would say definitely. So we the decision we made to to quit our jobs wasn't an impulsive decision we didn't wake up the one morning being cut full of our vet, with our work and just decide no it's done we're quitting today uh, this was probably something we considered the past year and a half maybe two years already uh, and obviously with big decisions like this you it's not something you just rely on your own emotions you have to consult other people you know talk to other people but most importantly for us we prayed about it a lot I made a video where I explained exactly why we quit our jobs that you guys can check out if you haven't already. But yeah, we, we prayed a lot and something that I always experienced in my life is when I'm faced, faced with a difficult decision and I pray about it and whatever I decide, if I have this, this peace and calmness inside of me, that's kind of indication that God is telling me this is the right decision and I definitely have that calmness. Even if this decision does not make any sense on paper, financially, in the numbers, we both have this, this calmness inside of our hearts. And even now that we have so many projects that we can take on, it's difficult to discern which one is the best one to move forward. So even now, it's even more important for us to, to pray every day and to, to pray for guidance to know which is the best project to, to take on next. Yeah, so in the end, it's very reassuring to know that there's a bigger power that's in control of everything. Because many times when you face a wall and you feel like a failure, you know that there's a bigger picture. God knows what he is intending for our lives. So we just have to fit the right pieces in the bigger overall puzzle which we cannot see right now, but we trust and we pray for guidance every single day. Oh, I think you summed up that pretty well. Why did you not wait until your side hustles matched your full-time income before quitting your job? Yeah, so that would be the ideal situation to build up these side projects where you get to a point where it matches your full-time income and then making the leap because then you're not taking that much of a financial risk. On numbers, that would make sense. But life is not always just about numbers we were in a job where we really enjoyed the environment but it was just we were just on a lot of pressure and it started to take a toll on our mental capacity and unfortunately in our industry uh, vets do suffer a lot from things like depression and we started identifying a couple of warning signs and it affected our personalities so it was a, a good move at the time to just stop with what we were doing and just to take a step back so uh, our side hustles do not match our full-time income. In fact, we are taking a massive pay cut, but that's okay. We made a calculated risk. We made sure we had a big, a very big emergency fund in place to help fund us through this process of transitioning to entrepreneurship. And But yeah, the other thing is we are very fortunate that there are a big demand for veterinarians in South Africa. So if this whole thing does not work out and we run out of money, we can simply go back to being vets or just locuming. There are a lot of opportunities available and we are able to jump to another bigger boat if our little boat starts sinking. So at least we have that option available.
Yeah, and um, also another reason, but it's not the main reason, um, is to be able to have more time to work on on the side hustle projects. While working full time, I especially struggled a bit to have the mental energy to go and sit for hours and, and work in front of a computer after a long day's work. So now being able to do that all day gives the projects a, a big boost. Yeah, but it, that's not the ideal way to do it. Actually, you should um, yeah. make a full time income and then quit your job. That's way more responsible. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, like we, like Peter said, it it was a very calculated risk that we that we took. We knew we had enough funds to be able to sustain ourselves for a few months, and we don't have any dependents, and we don't have a house, we don't have any debt. So we're super fortunate to be able to take this risk. Um, and so it's it was just a good time in our lives to to do something like this, and we didn't want to let the opportunity pass us by. Yeah, with most people that we told we're going to make this move, most of them were like, yo, that, that's very risky. But when they thought about it a, a while, especially the other people, they're like, just like, I should have done that. And uh, that's something that we are just, we were concerned that if we don't do this now and we're still young and we have the opportunity, we may miss it. And then in 20 years time, look back and say, yeah, we should have done that. So it's just, it's, uh, it's not an impulsive decision. But there is an impulsive element to it. It's not the mainstream way to do things. Definitely not conventional. Definitely not something that I would recommend you do if you don't have that steady stream of income coming uh, that, that matches your, in, your full-time income. But we had enough systems in place to be able to do this. And yeah, it's with side hustles, it takes a long time to get them out of the sandbox to just get things moving. It's like pushing a very heavy uh, cart in the beginning, it does not want to move. You have to put in all your effort. But once it starts rolling, it's a bit easier and easier to grow. And that's kind of what we're focusing on now. It's just to get this all of these little cards moving, putting all our effort into it, full-time, 100%. And then hopefully, when everything starts moving, we can go back to full-time vets or part-time vets and still work on these projects. But just to get the ball rolling is the basic main aim of what we are doing now. In this new normal of working for yourselves, do you now miss anything about your previous salaried job in hindsight? Yeah, it's it's always the thing like uh, you don't know what you have until it's gone, uh, kind of. So for me, it's basically the stability of the income. I'm a numbers guy, so I like to see every, every year you need to see more money coming in. For us, we are just getting less and less money. So we are kind of at rock bottom at the moment, but then we are hopefully just going to grow from here. So the stability of the income definitely for me and... Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we had to make quite a few lifestyle changes. So not able to, to eat out or just go do, I don't know, go see a movie or something. Um, buy a cake. Buy a cake. <laughs> and then obviously certain parts of um, our jobs as vets I, I, I do miss. But... Overall, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with what we're doing at the moment for, for the time being. Yep. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> what was your total expenses over the past three months? Okay, so I am posting a monthly income and expenses report update on my Patreon page that you guys can go check out if you want to. But basically, when compared to the expenses, the average expenses from 2021, we basically cut our expenses by about 40% which I'm really glad. We obviously spent way too much. If you guys watch my video on how much we spent, but I'm really glad that we were able to cut it down because that was another thing that I wanted to test it out to see if we really need that kind of luxury lifestyle to be happy. And we don't. Spoiler alert. Uh, it has been, again, very liberating to cut down on these costs and we are more happy than we've been actually, to think of it. So you don't need all the luxury stuff. I cannot go to KFC anymore to, to, to buy ice cream because I can't afford it. And that's okay. Because like it's only ice cream. Yeah, well, <laughs> it starts with ice cream. But I, it's also not healthy for me. So that, that just makes my life actually better in a sense. Do you still pay for medical aid and insurance? Did you have to get recodes to cut expenses? Yeah, so we still pay for the medical aid. Uh, so we have a hospital plan and, and gap cover for, for both of us. And then insurance, you know, life insurance, short-term insurance, all of that. 
We still pay for both of them. We did not get new quotes. We actually added some individualized items onto our short term insurance quote because we are traveling a lot more and we are traveling with a lot of gear. So our insurance is actually more expensive. At least my car insurance are now off the list, but it is actually more. Um, but yeah, that's just one of those grudge expenses. You pay it, you don't like it, but the one day when something happens, then you're really glad that that was in place. So our medical aid and insurance probably makes up about 20% of our expenses at the moment, which is a lot, but it is what it is. I don't want to cut back down on it because then as Murphy will have it, something will probably happen and then you regret it. And sometimes with the life insurance companies, when you cut down your covered amount and you want to upgrade again, they want to run a bunch of tests again and then they might just add a bit of a premium to that. So we are just leaving it as it is, pay it and yeah, just to give us that extra peace of mind. That is really important. If you're going to make this move, do not cut back on your medical aid or insurance. You need to pay that. That's very important. Do you still contribute towards retirement? Yes, definitely. That is very important to do. Even if you earn very little, you still need to contribute. So we are both filling up our tax-free savings account, contributing the 3,000 Rand per month to that. And then we are still contributing towards our retirement annuity, albeit less than we contributed before. Uh, I'm not contributing towards cryptocurrency or offshore investments or anything like that. So I cut back down on that, but we are still contributing towards our retirement. Especially with a tax-free savings account, you have the limited 36,000 Rand per year that you can contribute. So you don't want to miss out on that uh, contribution. So that's why it's our first priority to fill up with that. And then the RS is just to, to keep the debit order going, but it's basically the minimum. I think it's like 500 Rand a month. So that, that is affordable. We took that into consideration when we planned ahead with how long our emergency fund will last uh, because we are basically just converting some of our savings to long-term retirement investments. And that is something that is very important for us still. Did you have to dig into your savings and were there any unexpected expenses you did not budget for? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we obviously had to dig into our savings a lot. Our income from our side hustles is not nearly as much as our expenses. So yeah, our emergency fund is taking a big hop every month and our net worth is decreasing as we go along. But again, it was part of the plan. It's a calculated risk and we are not looking back on it. In terms of unexpected expenses, that will always happen. We had a couple of, of visits to the dentist and the doctors for, for minor checkups that, that add a couple of out-of-pocket expenses. Oh, it was a bit more than checkups. Yeah, it was, but it was necessary. It was necessary. <laughs> Go to the doctor if you're ill. Don't try and fix it at home. Also, with your pet. If your pet is sick, take him to the vet. And then other expenses like the car services and stuff like that. But it is what it is. Uh, you have to pay it. So we, some months we go over budget. Some, some months we go under budget. It's just how life is. It's not going to be any different now. Um, and you just deal with it. Yeah. Would you make the same decision of quitting your jobs if you had the chance to do it all over again? Yes. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. It has been an awesome experience the past three months. We grew closer together. We were able to just develop our skills and talents and just to see what is available in the world. And mm. obviously financially, it would make sense to just continue working. But I think we, we stopped when it was necessary. And we now have the opportunity to just take a step back, recoup, see what is available and see where we are headed in our life. So mm. yeah, definitely would do it again. Yeah, and learning a lot about ourselves as people and how you cope in different circumstances it's very valuable mm. and then freeing ourselves from consumerism has yeah. also been a big thing and experiencing a lower stress lifestyle just like <laughs> fantastic it's so nice not being phoned awake at two o'clock in the morning for an animal emergency that's very nice <laughs> let's get a proper sleep and also yeah just developing the skill set we are working on stuff like making videos and writing blogs and stuff it may not sound very cool but we are moving into a digital world and i think just developing these skills can just take you way ahead uh, of the pack and also if we build up these side hustles we go back to work we work for a couple of years and we decide ah we're tired again just go back to our side hustles. We already developed the skills. So it's just a way to earn income. I know it's not a lot now, but we're hoping for that exponential growth to one day be able to earn more income, to do part-time work as veterinarians 
and then in essence to buy more time to spend to build our family especially when we get kids it's very important for us to then be able to have more time to spend with them and you need if you want more time you need more money especially passive money that just comes in even if you sleep or if you don't work so yeah okay any advice on what things to consider to ensure you are leaving for the right reasons and not impulsively mm. yeah so a couple of things firstly emergency fund make sure you have a black of fit one in place uh, not three months not six months at least nine months ideally 12 months because most side hustles takes about at least a year to just gain traction and on that note you also at least need uh, some sort of revenue coming in either you need clients on the side that you are working for earning active income or some passive income projects like a youtube channel or a blog or uh, affiliate marketing or stuff like that making money online because you need to have something you, the the ball needs to be rolling at least a bit otherwise you will just freak out and you will not enjoy it at at all and then yeah not not making the decision imp- impulsively obviously you need to think about it you need to discuss it with if you have a partner very important especially if you're doing this together you both need to understand why you are doing it and you both need to be on the same page must not be the one dominating the decision uh, you both need to agree to this because it can put a lot of strain on the relationship and obviously what was the main thing for us was prayer every day, every single day um, asking for guidance from god so that that's probably the base of it and yeah just just to make sure that this is actually what you want to do obviously if you have a full time job you are very fortunate to have a job especially in this country the unemployment rate in south africa is sky high so if you have a full time job then obviously that is a privilege to start with um just something i um while well, peter mentioned it a little bit um is just to not make an impulsive decision uh but take your time considering all the risks that you are taking make sure that you you speak to people that you trust people that you whose opinion you value sometimes things are are a bit tough at work or there's there's a lot of things going on in life and you're going through a season that is not 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 as nice but just remember that tough times will also pass and then and then it might be better again so just just take care not to to make a a very big jump because of a temporary um tough time but to consider the grand scheme and also just use people you trust as soundboards um before jumping in to something like this how would you advise others to overcome fear of failure uh yeah this is a uh, probably a video on its own i would say you can't <laughs> I, can't, i cannot give you a a solid piece of motivation yeah you know there's a lot of motivation videos of of the rock running up a mountain and this <laughs> morgan freeman voice in the background like yeah i'm pumped let's go do it failure i i'm not afraid of failure i actually embrace it because i don't see failure as me failing as a person just it's just finding another way not to do something so, yeah i actually it's not like i want failure to happen i'm just so used to it actually in my life um but i always learn something from it and you just become stronger overcoming it and proving it to yourself that it's not going to set you back so yeah don't don't be scared of failure you will always fail but just know that failure is not the end it, it doesn't matter if you fail it matters what happens after that i think that the question overcome fear of failure don't think of it as fear see it as a, an opportunity to learn and to be better because take elon musk for example a fellow south african just breaking constant barriers that not even the most intelligent people in the world can understand i mean he's just a normal guy like us he's failed in 2008 he was down in the dumps and people told him he was an idiot and stupid and a complete failure and look where he is now but and you can lit read the biographies of all these big billionaires in, in the world they all faced failure constantly in their lives but it should not prevent you from taking on a project or a new experience in your life it should just motivate you to find another way to achieve success oh, that's that's uh, some pretty wise words there um peter taught me a lot about not being afraid of failure because i i would um reconsider and reconsider and doubt myself and then not do something but peter jumps in and get it, gets it done and even if it doesn't work out 
it's not the end of the world. You learn from it and then you adapt and overcome. A failure is not going to, to end, the, end the world. It's going to present you with a challenge that's going to make you stronger. Yeah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> something that was very important for me and something that I obviously learned with time is to, to know your self-worth, know your identity, know who you are. Because if you know who you are and, and you love yourself for who you are, both your imperf- especially your imperfections, then there are very little things that people can do to hurt you. Um, me putting myself on the internet like this, on starting this YouTube channel, I mean, there's a lot of risk of this. People can call you ugly and stupid and you talk funny. Actually, somebody told me I sound Indian at one stage, but <laughs> <laughs> I knew that this might happen, but it doesn't bother me. I, I laugh at it. I embrace it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You guys, um, this is maybe something that I can improve on my life. But it's not going to to hold me back. It's actually, again, showing me a new opportunity to improve on something. Um, So knowing your self-worth is very important. And that is not going to just happen. You're going to build on that the rest of your life. But just know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And those words are very powerful. So whoever you are, whatever you're doing, you have the potential to achieve success. Just believe in it. And yeah, you can do it. (laughs) What does the future look like for the two of you? Okay, so yeah, where are we going? Um, we will probably continue with these side projects for at least another three to five months, hopefully. Just depends on how long our money lasts. Um, but we will probably want to start earning a bit more active income, either telemedicine or locuming as vets. Just a part-time job, just to at least get more income in. It's just to soften the blow on our expenses. And after that, I would ideally want to continue with the entrepreneurship route. I really like to build stuff from the ground. I have a lot of ideas and hopefully just if I can see more returns on my investment, on my time investment, that would be good. I want to still use my six year degree in veterinary science to build on that because otherwise I'm just kind of throwing it out. But I'm sure that I'll be able to use that in a sustainable way. And for me, um, I would definitely go back to veterinary in some form or an, or another. Um, I, I quite miss it. I, I'm not sure where or how, but uh, we'll figure it out as we as we go along. Obviously, somewhere down the line, we, we are planning on, on settling somewhere. But yeah, we don't know where or when, just taking it, uh, I'd say, week by week for the time being. Yeah, which is also liberating because... We don't have to plan ahead too far. We're just taking it as it comes and grabbing all the opportunities that we can get. Okay, the last one. Do you offer one-on-one financial consulting services? So, so I need to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm really flattered. That I get a lot of these questions, like guys approaching me and girls asking like, hey, Peter, can you maybe, can we have a chat? I have some questions about finances. Um, and I, I really appreciate it that you guys trust me with these important decisions. And that just shows me that we are building a strong community on YouTube. Um, but I am a veterinarian. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm sorry, I have to give that disclaimer. And as much as I do want to help you guys, and especially because I want to help you guys give you the best information in my videos, it won't feel right for me to charge you money to offer advice because I cannot do that. Even legally, I'm not allowed to do that. And I don't know everything, obviously. Um, there are many parts of personal finance that I see research and that I started to learn, but there are many other parts that I know nothing about. And I don't want to make a mistake and f- cause somebody financial ruin. Um, so if I want to do this, I have to get my CPA degree, which is about two to three year degree which is something that I've considered, um, not currently at the moment, but maybe in the future, because if I'm going to ask money for something like this, then I want to give you guys the best possible advice. Um, But what I can do is you guys can send me questions in the comments and on email and all of that, and I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability. And if it's a bigger topic, something that I don't know anything about, I will go do research and make a proper video or a guide on that. So that is what I can do for you guys. But at this stage, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to offer this one-on-one consulting. It just won't feel right for me. Even though that would obviously bring in a lot more money for us, it's, it's just going to go against my, my beliefs. Um, so yeah, 
but I'll still be able to at least give you information to get you started or refer you to somebody that I know is properly educated and that can provide you with independent financial advice. So that is what I can do. Okay, guys, thank you. That was, I think that's all the questions for now. Um, yeah, and I, we just want to say thank you to this community on YouTube. Just like you guys have been so supportive of all of the projects that we are doing. And I released a couple of questionable videos in the past when I'm like, yes, I don't know if I should share this with everyone. And really, you guys have just been so supportive. I think my channel has like a 99.8% like ratio. Like, so you guys are just so awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it really helps us, really, to, to continue doing what we are doing, to know that there's people rooting for us, backing us, even though the decisions may seem a bit unconventional. You guys are there, and we want to provide you guys with the best possible content, both financially and veterinary-related, because, again, our main objective is to educate people and to empower them to take better care of themselves and their pets, going full circle, and having this community together is just awesome so yeah if you guys want to to follow us obviously on youtube but i will list all of our social media channels in the description that you guys can go check out and if you want to support us that would be awesome and yeah just yeah. continue to be awesome thank you from the bottom of our hearts <laughs> okay can i just add that peter did not allow me to hold the microphone because he thinks i might drop it and that is actually something that I might do. <laughs> and we cannot afford that. <laughs> okay, but yeah, thank you guys. As always, you must all have a, a lack, lack of day. day. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.